Update 0.8.0 brought changes to the gameplay of aircraft carriers in World of Warships. In this episode of How It Works, we'll review the new features that have been introduced into the game. Let's start with aircraft. Now there are three types available, torpedo bombers, dive bombers, and newcomers to our game, attack aircraft, armed with unguided rockets. To launch a squadron, simply press one, two, or three to select the desired squadron. Then press the same key once again to give the order to take off. One launches attack aircraft, two launches torpedo bombers, and three launches dive bombers. Let's start with the torpedo bombers. We have reworked the method of controlling aircraft. As of now, players control only one squadron at a time in a third-person view. After taking off, planes automatically accelerate to their cruising speed. You can temporarily increase or decrease this by pressing W or S accordingly. When affecting the speed in this manner, planes consume engine boost, a scale that can be found in the left side of the squadron's combat interface. Press A or D to turn left or right, or alternatively turn using the mouse. To look around you, press and hold the right mouse button. Once the engine boost is completely spent, you need to either wait for it to restore automatically or activate the engine cooling consumable. You can increase the cruising speed of your aircraft by installing the Flight Control Modification 2 upgrade and learning the improved engine's commander skill. The action time of engine boost can be extended by mounting the Aircraft Engine Modification 1 upgrade and learning the improved engine boost commander skill. The last gasp commander skill completely restores the engine boost of the last attack flight of the aircraft carrier's planes. The grey triangle of the torpedo bomber's sights will help you in aiming. Click the left mouse button to begin a target run. An attacking flight consisting of several aircraft will detach from the squadron. Their number depending on the tier and nation of your ship. Now they're under your direct control. When a target run begins, the sight will be yellow and a special timer will inform you about the plane's readiness to carry out an attack. When your aircraft are ready to attack, the sight will become green and a new timer will start. This represents the time window that you have to launch your torpedoes. You can adjust your aim and use engine boost. But remember that moving left or right will slow down the aiming of the torpedo sight. You can reduce the aiming time by learning the sight stabilization commander skill. Click the left mouse button again to launch your torpedoes. If you don't do this before the timer runs out, the attacking flight will automatically rejoin the squadron. You can increase the time provided for an attack by installing the Torpedo Bombers Modification 1 upgrade. Remember that a torpedo needs some time to arm after hitting the water. If you attack a target when it's in the yellow part of the site's cone, the torpedo won't arm or do any damage. The aircraft remaining in the squadron follow the attacking flight. Having launched torpedoes, the planes from the attacking flight automatically return to their carrier. In the meantime, you can continue engaging the target with other aircraft from the squadron. Once the last flight has expended its ammunition, you will be returned to the aircraft carrier where you can select a new squadron. Now let's review attack aircraft and dive bombers. Attack aircraft are armed with unguided rockets. Dive bombers can carry two bomb types, high explosive and armor piercing. The damage mechanics of both high explosive bombs and the rockets of attack aircraft are similar to those of artillery high explosive shells. Note that the demolition expert commander skill also increases the chances of setting the enemy on fire with the high explosive aviation ammunition. Armor-piercing bombs have mechanics similar to armor-piercing shells. We've already given you a detailed breakdown of this ammunition type 
in one of the previous episodes of How It Works. The sights of both squadron types look like an oblong ellipse. Click the left mouse button when you're ready to attack. The attacking flight of dive bombers will first soar upwards and then dive towards the target. When the ellipse becomes green, you can drop your bombs by clicking the left mouse button. Don't forget about the timer that shows you how much time you have to carry out your attack. As for attack aircraft, a flight detaches from the squadron and approaches its target before launching rockets at short range without diving. It's worth noting that you can increase the time that attack aircraft have to attack by mounting the attack aircraft modification 1 upgrade. If your aircraft carry armor-piercing bombs, the angle at which the bombs penetrate their target plays an important role. To avoid ricochets and non-penetrations, try dropping bombs at different angles at various points along the aircraft diving trajectory. While steering your aircraft, you can switch back to controlling your carrier at any time. To do so, you simply need to press F. The squadron in the air at the moment will automatically return to the carrier. You can also control your aircraft carrier with the help of the tactical map. To do this, press M and plot the course you want your ship to follow. When doing this, the squadron remains under your control. In the next episode of How It Works, we'll tell you all about the mechanics of anti-aircraft defenses, new consumables and fighter planes. Until next time, good luck in battle. <laughs>